Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. This is the second episode in a brand new game in my brand new series, Age of Wonders 4. Now we are on the beginner campaign as I am still learning how to play this game. I have not played in Age of Wonders since Age of Wonders 2. So I imagine there's several things that have changed since then. And so we are just, yeah, moving moving forward as, as best we can. Oh, a sign of Whispering Stone. I've done that. And one more. Destroy an infestation, explore an ancient wonder. We will get to those shortly. So yeah, we are on our campaign and we are with the great Snuggles Meowicus, Emperor of the Fluffy Kin. Oh, not them. The Fluffy Kin Hunters. So there you go, folks. That's who we are and that is what we are pushing forward. We are actually going to jump back above ground with Fluffy Kin so that we can... Oh, there you go. At least I'm at least I'm back on the surface. So yeah, that's that's what we're doing. We're gonna we've got a bit of extra range and sight over this area here. So we are just going to start exploring a bit over here. We have uh, another ruin. We have another ruin here. We have uh, this dude who I quite like to get off this gold mine so I can get it into use. Um and yeah, so like I said, yeah, we we've just started this game. We are learning as we go through, and we are, yeah, very much enjoying it. The first episode ended up being 25 minutes too long, so I'll try to keep an eye on the time for the rest of them and make them down to 45 minutes. And as always, if you are enjoying it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and please, 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 if you have any suggestions whatsoever, chuck them down in the comments section. Let me know if, they, if you hear me mumbling to myself or questioning life in general, feel free to chuck the answer down in the comments below and let me know what is going on because there are many things about this game which I am not going to have a clue about. So yeah, let me know, let me know what's going on. Let me know what I might be missing when, like I said, you hear me mumbling out loud. New, oh, Empire Development Skill. Unlocks the ability for units to excavate earthen terrain in the underground. Uh, the natural feature of a province such as a forest, river, or grassy plain. Determines which province improvements can be built in a province. Um, units are forces to make up your armies. The underground is the underground. Okay, so that's what all of those things are. I'm not quite sure how that all actually adds together. There you go. That's your first question, folks. Um... So yeah, let's go through my units one more. Ah, you were gonna jump on the map. Have encountered another ruler. Oh hello. Biggest roadblock to victory. But they may this overview. This will show you will show information you about the information ruler. About the personality ruler. treaties and current the relations with you. Treaties and so you wish to force lines with to defeat. Or anything in between. Hail Emperor Snuggles Meowicus. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Wild Guardian. Zaylith Silverleaf. Many gotta make war, I aim to make peace. She grants you cautiously. Relations minus 25. Okay. How do you greet Wild Guardian Zaylith Silverleaf? Um, I could give her a gift. She has interests in gold and mana. She is authoritarian, a strict ruler who believes in high civic order. She does look like she's uh, Throne City Utopia. First elves, who are high. I was about to say, they look kind of like high elves, to be honest. Um, free nature, too. I think she's got almost exactly the same as me, which is ridiculous. Um, so she's an authority. Uh, likes empires with a single race, empires with a stronger military, empires with good relations with free... Oh, you don't like people who have good relations with free cities. Interesting. Dislikes empires that have many alliances. Okay, strategy. Informs their behavior on the strategic map. Alliances never breaks treaties. Like exploration and expansion. Empire by building and absorbing cities. They focus on improving their cities and defending them. Seeking out potential resources to pick up the nation wonders. Okay. So they never break treaties. That's always interesting. The strongest bond two players can share. Whilst an alliance, alliance victories are possible. Defensive pact. Uh, we are at peace. Which is, uh, yeah, with that. Send a welcome gift. Uh, make a familiar add all in the future. You get 50 gold, and your relationship with the ruler may improve by plus 50. Uh, send a threat. We're eventually going to war. 
Um, if I start negotiations, am I gonna miss sending a welcome gift if I so choose to do it? Hmm. We are at peace. Minus 25. Interesting. Uh, she is of good alignment. That's probably gonna help. Overall ranking, one out of three. War justification is balanced. Can be reached. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um. She is, she is there. That's, that's kind of terrible in terms of a where are they map. Um, I think... If that's that, and there's a, I think my dude was about here. Oh, wait, there's my dude. So they're up there then, I guess. Or that, I actually don't know. I'll have to get... Yes, this isn't a very... That's not the best uh, where are they map, in my opinion. But we'll have to get used to that. Send welcome gift. Yeah, let's send a welcome gift. Accept this gesture of goodwill, Snuggles Meowakas. Thank you. So... She is wary... The ruler feels threatened by your empire, which affects your relations with them by minus 200. And also makes trading with them more costly. Hmm. I wonder why she's so threatened by me. Opens a pronouncement sub-options. Declaration of friendship. A modifier that slowly increases towards plus 300 will be added to your relations with the ruler. Any grievances gained against the ruler will reduce by 40% when two rulers declare friendship with each other. Each active diplomatic treaty they have increases the maximum relationship bonus by plus 25 up to plus 400. Maintaining a declaration costs 10 gold upkeep per turn, which increases by 10 gold for each additional declaration. Okay, but I don't want to spend 10 gold per turn. If I wanted to negotiate beneficial agreements with fellow rulers. To your strength and a bond between your empires, you, you can, can trade assets to make profit or send gifts. Both rulers agree to a wizard's bond to improve empire relations and access new treaties and diplomatic states. The throne city of each ruler will be revealed. Rulers can call each other to war. Leads to defensive pact, open borders, province claiming pact, teleporter pact. Trade value. Uh, we have 100 trade value each. Okay... Empire Relations is indifferent. Um, positive first. So I'm naturally on a minus 50. Because um, so that, that uh, just met. Oh, that'll disappear. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. Passive modifier. has got an active bonus. Ah, right. Sorry. I'm, I'm doubling things up. So... We will be on a... We will be perfectly neutral. Um, through through our things. Threat level. Uh, it's a little in fact that look how well each ruler is doing. For example, if they have large armies, many cities are supported by many allies. How threatened other rulers feel. They feel very threatened by me. Always interesting. Um, but, so we do have a... Yeah, positive of 25... That will become a positive of 50 in 10 turns, but then will drop down to a zero five turns after that. Um, my assets. I have some resources. I can send a gift. Open borders. Requires wizard's bond. Requires wizard's bond. Requires wizard's bond. Province claiming pact. Both rulers are allowed to build on each other's claimed provinces. Both rulers allow each other to teleport to and from their teleporters. Open borders. Cancel. So, a wizard's bond. They ask for one of the following in return. Uh, definitely not. Definitely not indeed. Right, so we'll leave... We'll leave the negotiations then. I assume that was that one, yes. Three cities, races... Uh, yeah, they're... They're pretty much exactly the same as me. That's ridiculous. I assume if I... Yeah, diplomacy, I can click on them. Uh, unknown ruler. Cool. So there is Altopia, which has, I assume, a population of four. Let's have a look at mine. Does it say three? Yep. So that's their population. That's where they are. There's a silver pond. Okay, that was the bit of the map that we just revealed to ourselves. So let's keep pushing in this direction. And with you... 
We are going to take you to the ocean. Your army has embarked. And let's see where we end up. Um, I think I might bring you around here, basically, to pick that up. And also, because I'm going to get you to join up with him so that you can have two archers. Because we have a fighter, a shield unit, a healer, and an archer. I lost an archer due to absolutely terrible fighting. Unit enchantment, general research. Grants very fast movement. Uh, select new research. Summon wild animal. Summons a random tier 1 animal onto the target world hex. Small chance of summoning a tier 2 animal. The animals possible depend on the type of terrain this skill is cast on. I could attempt to get a wild speaker, who is an offensive magic user. Or enchanted crow companion. Scout unit. Plus two vision range on the world map for my scout units. Uh, I think I'm going to actually do that one and really attempt to push my scout units up to the top. Negotiations succeeded. Our diplomatic state with the Dawn Spire is now Pact of Cooperation. They've opened their borders. Trading is enabled. Up to two resource trades are available. Magic materials can be traded. Next up is a Pact of Loyalty. Good news. Proceed. Uh, trade. Select an item. I can pay 9 mana and receive 10 food. Um, I can pay 25... Oh, that's per turn. Okay. Um, I can pay 10 gold and receive... Unique global effects. Is that... Is that an item or... Plus 100 relations with free cities and rulers. So basically, I can pay 10 gold for 15 turns, and I assume I get... Is that an item, or is that just a boost for the next 15 turns? Hmm, I really have no idea. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. Um, I'm going to do it and find out. I'm going to swap mana for food, I think. That, I assume, comes into here. Yep, I'm now getting plus 70 a turn. Very nice. There you go, if I go on that. Uh, uh, base plus 10, structures. Treaty with Dawnspire. Yep, that's why the base says plus 10. Um, you already have an active trade with this free city. Oh, okay. I can trade up to... Ah, so you choose one out of the three. That counts as trading two resources. Interesting. Uh, Pact of Loyalty in three turns. Um, wow, really? So I am getting quite a lot then, I assume. Um, uh, allegiance per turn plus three. Pride Allegiance 27. Min Allegiance 27. Min 12, so 15 off. So... Which is what that is, right? Pack the Royalty. Yeah. Three turns. That's huge. That is absolutely huge. Um, base value plus two. Relations trusting plus three. So I'm getting five per turn. Nice. They trust me. And they should be staying that way for a while. Okay, so let's end the turn there. I mean, I don't really... It's quite interesting. It's not like... Something just exploded on my right. Uh, I was about to say, it's not like there's too much else moving on the map. Um, so yeah, let's have you... So it definitely just exploded over there, which makes me slightly worried. So, 400 versus 295. <laughs> that could go horribly wrong. Let's... Uh, fine, I'll do this manually. I was hoping you'd simply skip to my next unit. Let us... Oh, is this...
coast, unclaimed province. Uh, no, I, I thought I said I could find dude. Uh, does this map have an edge? Oh, it does. It's not... Oh, wow, it doesn't go all the way around. Okay, then. Oh, and in that case, you can you can get your ass back out of the ocean. <laughs> Fair enough. I thought it would just, like, at least keep going around in a circle or something. Uh, no, we're not going to get you to come up here because... Impossible battle. Huh. I imagine they all say that, though, to be honest. So we will, we want you to come back up. Uh, yeah, let's get you there. So I can get you back on land, basically. Um, and my other guy, where is he? Hey. NPC Army of Dawnspire. Uh, you are... Send you across to the left, right. Oh, see now this is an ocean I will cross. Orders required. Now this could be a horrible, horrible mistake. I mean, I'm not that much stronger than them. But let's see what happens. What's life without a little challenge, eh, folks? Allow the AL to use spells automatically. Uh, so obviously I'm only just stronger than them. Manual combat. Snuggles Meowcast attack the Marauder Guard. We're going to get to go first. Who? Interesting. Oh, Pack Hunter. What's Pack Hunter? Oh, I can't. I can't. Oh, yes, I can. There you go. Pack Hunter. Deals 20% damage per friendly adjacent unit with... Oh, dear. No. Uh, unit upkeep juice for 25%. Uh, defense mode or melee strike. Burning. Base 30% chance of inflicting burning for three turns. Um... No, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Uh, and I have a feeling... Yeah, they have a huge range. So they can move to their next turn. And you're the forward guy, so... That doesn't give me very many... He... Okay, he doesn't have... Uh, one of these things, basically. Oh, whoops. I always do that. I always hit the wrong button. He has been awakened. Uh, so how far did I say he can get? He can get to there. So it doesn't give me... Uh, so let's just move over to there. him just in front of the tree. Yeah, that'll do. Super Sanity Inflecting Electrified suffers 8 lightning damage each. Oh, very nice. When she was hit by melee attack, get a chance of being uh, electrocuting someone back right now then. 100% chance at a range of 4. That does technically put me in range, but keeps me out of To all adjacent hexes. Okay, plus three resistance and plus three status. That's... Trying to use plus three defense. You don't have anything. No, you just don't need flanking as do you. Ah, that's it. I was about to say, I'm sure you can rotate units on this, but there you go. I've just found it there. So that obviously, I can't do it with him because he's just been. That's something I need to make sure I do before I end any turns. Um, yeah, so that might not be a bad spot to get into. Um, with this guy. So I might try and get into that bit of getting obscured. I'm 40% harder to hit with ranged attacks. Ah, never mind. Because they don't have... Oh, it's an Inferno Puppy. They don't have any ranged attacks. Any... Oh, he's got two Inferno Puppies. Okay. Obviously, they're slightly weaker than the uh, big guys. I'm going to end that turn there. 
Uh, it went into defense mode. Okay. Hopefully, yep, he comes nice and far. Obviously, they all get Pack Hunter because they're sticking together. That's fine. Um... Let's move up to there. And let's. He has Spirit Weakness. Nice. I always do that. Out of curiosity. Let's just have a quick range around the map. Know that. Oh, does that? No, I don't think that does anything, no. Uh, so we just have spiky stuff and obscuring stuff, I believe. That's all cool. That is all cool. Um... And that will leave me with, yep, one. Woo! So he's uh, now being weakened because he, I managed to get rid of one of them. Uh, I think it might be worth. Very much be worth. That's a good point. I have spells as well, don't I? Uh, all friendly animals and cavalries. I should. This is. Animal. An animal unit. Yes. Fighter unit. Whereas, obviously, these guys, unfortunately, are not animal units. Okay, but he is an animal unit, so. 2 plus 2 plus 1 strengthened. Ah, oh, of course, I need to remember to apply this stuff. It's awakened for 3 turns. I've already awakened unit gains. Strengthened instead. Let's just remind myself. Uh, well, awakened, this unit gains awakened shield of light. Plus 1 defense, plus 2 resistance. Um... I am going to mark him as prey. Oh, whoops, I keep doing that. I keep pressing the wrong buttons. Snuggles Meowcus. Uh, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. where did... It's because I keep pressing the wrong buttons. I do apologize, folks. I have to get used to which one's right, which one's left. Is in the clicking. Um. Oh, very nice damage. Thanks to everything. Uh, so yeah, let's shoot him. Your unit just attacked an enemy from behind. This is called. Kind of. Um, can't, no, we can't get in there to finish it off, though. Um, can you technically... Oh, you can. Let's have you go across there and have a go. And then let's have you come in and have a go, basically. Seven damage. That was terrible. Um, uh, and that's my turn, it would seem. Ouch. Yeah, have a bite back. Okay, he's down to one unit. That's great. No, 
nom 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 nom. Oh, 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 oh. Um. Okay, these two units are pretty much going to kill themselves. So I'm going to let them, quite frankly. Um. I'm going to spirit blast this guy. Although, before I uh, continue to do that kind of stuff, I should probably mark him as prey. Oh, wow, straight to death, huh? Uh, go for it. Boom, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, effect, none. Oh, even though I just want to kill somebody? That seems harsh. Um, Let's keep weakening them. Ah, only, only one or two died, I think. Um, then I might even... No, maybe not. Let's take him out. Morale low, morale high. Critical chance plus 20%. Oh, very nice. Plus 10 because an enemy just died right next to him. Very nice, very nice, very nice. And... Yeah, let's take him out as well. Nice, morale is increasing. That is the end of my turn. A unit has low morale because the tide of battle is turning against it. Units with Oh, damn it. Ah, oh, I was hoping he would live. I know it was going to be close, but Die you bugger. I lost my pet snake. I really maybe I should have yeah. I should have uh, I should have dragged him backwards when I had the chance. Okay, well we've got uh, some increased ranks going on, and we've leveled up our hero. A hero can choose a new hero skill every time they reach a new level. You can choose. Okay. Um, so obviously I can either take the gold tier one ring opportunity to deal thirty percent damage to on opportunity attacks, which are a retaliation attack that are triggered when an enemy unit leaves the zone of control. Okay, that's not really um, going to happen too much, to be honest. Uh, let's have a look at you, shall we? So we can, I mean, I suppose we may as well equip it just in case it happens. Um, of course, I can adjust his appearance, which I'm not going to do. He is now level 2. Which, there you go, there's my rank up one. Uh, Warfare 1, learned. Unlock signature skill at 5, 10, I'm going to get 15 and 20. Defense 1. Uh, plus 1 defense, 5% evasion. Melee attacks gain plus 10 damage, so we're not going to do that. Sprint, always hit. For one turn, grants plus 8 movement, grants slippery. That's elusive. And all the effects of terrain in combat. Uh, melee attacks gain plus 10% damaged. Damage, sorry. I mean, archery is what I want. Learn one more waif warfare skill to unlock. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, so I guess it'll probably be defense then. And I suppose pr sprint could give me some really nice, um, some really nice map control. But the fact that I'm ranged, I don't think I really need it that much. I'm gonna go for defense, which again I don't really feel like I need because I shouldn't be getting. Oh, maybe I will get attacked though by ranged attacks, etc. So yeah, let's go for defense one. Confirm. So yeah, next I want uh, Archery 2, really. 20% damage via Retaliation Attacks and Opportunity Attacks. Gains for Strike. Nice. So our hero is leveled up, and he is going to come this way. He is going to keep uh, hopefully healing up. I'm not quite sure how fast healing takes. It doesn't really say. Um, and we're going to link up with... 
no way. Or do we want this guy to link up down here to come... No, the unit, please. The uh, army of Snuggles. Uh, do we want him to come down south to take on the Slitherer's Den? Ooh, tough choice. Am I at that level yet? Probably not. But uh, dumb things will be done. Dumb things will be done. So let's end that turn there. And it's a moving day 10 dawns. Turn 10, folks. <laughs> Hyperlinks and tooltips. You can always find out. Yep, I got that one. Uh, encyclopedia is up there. Cool. Invest your Imperium. Okay. Uh, you should have an Imperium at your disposal. Tap growth of the Empire. Acquire your Empire skills. Boost allegiance with the free city. Found new cities by population. Oh, whoa. Nope. Undo that one. Um, maybe I should. Maybe I should. Uh, attract population. Instant increase your population. The cost is determined by the number of turns. Uh, oh, and I have a free population by the looks of it. Outpost reduce work camp. Spells ready to cast. Comfy cardboard box can annex another province. It's the comfy cardboard box, ladies and gentlemen. Um, again, we get... Uh, we've got no particular, but let's... I mean, we're doing pretty good on food, to be honest. Um... move this way we start to get towards a mana node but that's not actually the next province is it no that's that province iron deposit is also there we basically need to get this one here to get range of those uh pastures yeah that links to that links to that. so those three are a nice little area rainbow clover uh, there's quite a nice, quite a nice thing going on over here about uh, getting seeds. This area is pretty much dead, except for unless, of course, I attempt to come over here and get something here. Um, so I think, kind of, we've got mana all the way down here, but then that's kind of on its own. What's this? Oyster reef again, a little bit far off. I. Th I think left is the general way to go. So that's the general way we're going to go. And I mean, there's stuff in between here anyway. Production stash. You can't use some production. Yeah, that's fine. That's obviously a bit of gold stash. Uh, so yeah, I don't think it really matters the top or the bottom one. I am going to. Let's. Chuck in a forester. And then, simply because I can, let's attract a population. And that only gives me an option of a forester. I think. Yeah, that basically allows me to jump out to either of those two, but I need to clear them first anyway. So I am actually just going to chuck another Forester in. And that should give me a little bit more production. And a little bit more food. Yes, the quarry also gives me uh, production. So those are the three things I've got at the moment. The quarry for pure production, the farm for pure food, or the Forester for a slight mix of both. So right, that's those. Uh, outpost produced a work camp. Oh, so the Outpost can also expand. And we are going to just straight up build... Yes, because that doesn't quite get me to that. We're going to straight up build a gold mine. And get the nice boost to our gold. That, uh, yeah, let's get you back on land. As I've just discovered that the world map, a map actually ends. Embarking costs... Hello, who are you? Army of Zathiel. Who is Zathiel? Oh, that's these guys. So who are these guys? Oh, NPC army. Oh, yeah. Dawn Spire. Of course, these guys. Um, uh, I suppose, yes. Unfortunately, that... Oh, hello. Oh, so much. So much stuff. So many, so many bad guys to kill. Marauder Guard. There's only one of them, though. 
Order guard. Oh, we need to get... I've only got a thing of 21. I was like, 85, that's quite low. Maybe I could... Nope. Uh, just nope. Um... Oh. I mean, how many... We can get back here in one turn. So ideally, I still... I would love to jump on that and then come back. Uh, oh, I can still get back in one turn. So yeah, we're going to do that. Uh, spells ready to cast. Um, I don't have. That's most used to cast spells on the world map. Base 25, Tomb of Beast plus 5. So I can't actually do any of this anyway, to be honest. Um... Which makes me also think that stuff I'm, yes, uh, upgrading is actually a little bit pointless. Ooh, and we have a knowledge stash. Ah, we might have to come back to the Slytherin den afterwards. So let's end that turn there. There are many paths to victory. Oh, who, what, why? During diplomatic negotiations, Magistrate Alara Lumine of Dawnspire invites you to a game of high-stakes wizards and kings. Very soon, it becomes clear that the Magistrate from Dawnspire is not up to the intricacies of a game meant to be played by Godair. What should have been a pleasant way to exchange favours slowly turns into a diplomatic disaster, as Alara grows more and more frustrated with every move you make. You could easily beat Magistrate Alara Lumine, but perhaps there are more important things at stake than winning this small victory. Um, I lose 12 allegiance. I received 204 gold, though, but I'm doing very well for gold. Uh, let her win, flattering her ego. Ooh, I'll lose some gold. But then, by the looks of it... Shares its income and magic materials. Other empires no longer negotiate better diplomatic... Join their overlord in any war they are fighting. Switches to the vassalage phase, during which further allegiances can be earned to improve the benefits of... I mean, yeah, let's... She will pretty much be... My vassal, near enough. Uh, where are we? Quests, hero overview, magic. No, not city. Armies. You have opened the rally of the leeches. Oh, I have. Here, you can rally armies from your vassals and conquered ancient wonders. The you amount can also of rallies turn for how many vassals and ancient wonders you own. determined by how many vassals and ancient wonders you own. If rally happens regularly, this can be sped up by spending gold. You can go back to the Rally Leeches at any time before the next rally starts to recruit more units. Recruitment points, zero out of two. Okay. This reduces the time until the next rally starts by three, which costs 30 gold. The cost is determined by the number of uh, rally points you have and the duration until the next rally. After the boost, the remaining duration will be four. Um, okay, not entirely sure. We'll see what happens with that in seven turns. Um, what did I want to see? Oh, Farms Grant plus five food. We've been ignoring this game. One Whispering Stone. Don't need to yet, but that's definitely good to know. Gain plus 20 combat casting and world map casting points. Um, potentially. The knowledge cost of another random skill is reduced by 25%. Uh, we don't need the Whispering Stone to join in for station or conquering a free city. Grants 300 relation to all of free cities. Um, are going to get the plus five food on farms because that is pretty good. Uh, Game plus one Whispering Stone. Let's uh, have a look at my spells a second. Uh, no, the 20 will start to get me somewhere, but it's not really going to get me that far. I can entrench. Build roads on the world map. And cost 3 gold per hex. It increases the city cap by plus 1. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to chuck that in. We're going to leave it at that. I mean, obviously, I still need a lot more. 
before I can actually do my, especially world casting, but uh, for now, uh, negotiations, free city, um, pact of cooperation, so pact of loyalty, uh, and so that hits up 45. So in in two turns, we are gonna have uh, they're gonna basically be my vassal. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, Enchanted crow companion. Select new research. Healing buff spell in combat. Unit enchantment. It's a high level spell. I'm going to get. I'm going to get the heal, quite frankly, because that could have actually saved some of my units. Uh, I did actually just check the new Empire skills that were available. Negotiations. Shares its vision. The free city allows building on claimed provinces. Contributes two to the Rally of Lieges. Um, into your Empire also help defend vassal cities using recruitment points. Uh... Oh, okay, so every 15 turns, the pool refreshes. Got it. So in seven more turns, I should be able to recruit some allied units. And will reinforce in combat. Fantastic. Uh, the comfy cardboard box produced an artisan workshop. So I need to set production in the comfy cardboard box. Oh, nice. The granary is boosted, which will give me more food. The library is also boosted, which gives me 10 knowledge income. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, plus 5 gold income, plus 15 draft. I could do with a lot more draft, to be honest. Uh, Stonemason, plus 15 production. Uh, Town Hall is also boosted, which allows me to get more units and a tavern. Or the vendor, which gives me more gold. Plus one province annex range. Plus ah, that would be fun. That would have been useful. Uh, let's jump in with that. That would have been useful. Then I wouldn't have had to have got on this. I could have just skipped. Never mind. Um, never mind indeed. And so then let's move my units. You are gonna jump into there. You have encountered a hostile free city. Meeting hostile Whetstone. That can be vassalized, integrated. Chieftain Gamblag Chainbreaker of the Free City Whetstone greets you with hostility. We burly looters of Whetstone will fight for our freedom and stand against anyone who threatens our free city, even when they are led by an emperor like you. The blood of invaders, thieves, and spies will nourish the fields. You are at war with the Whetstones. Uh, so be it. Okay. Oh, wow. And they have a rather... Large looking area. Oh, you are. Of course you are. What are you on though? 280. I will leave you for a second. We shall. Um, we'll bring you to there. And then with the other two guys, we shall. Oh, but if I venture into there, reveal an unexplored location. But if I enter into there, I believe these guys might wake up and then they'll start spawning out crazy people. Um, oh, I have a feeling that won't actually be unguarded, but it might be. Okay, and the free city of Whetstone. Let's just have a quick look at that. Burly looters. I assume they're probably clashing affinities. Well, that's not going to help. Uh, alignment plus 100. So they're... They're neutral alignment then? Yes, they are neutral. That's fine. Uh, Ruler Origin, champion of the people, plus 100. Uh, we're at war with them, which just gives us straight up minus 200. Interesting. Um, so a lead just minus 13. That's it where it says. Make peace. Wait five turns to negotiate. I can boost alliance or trade. So if I made peace, obviously I assume that would put me up to neutral. 
And that would put me on a plus 100 as an average score. Interesting. Would it... As I've met them so early... Would it be easier... To slow time peace out with them... As opposed to making an army and trying... To conquer them? Because... Yeah, that's a pretty rough looking army. They're pretty rough looking too, so... It might just be. It might just be. Uh, we definitely need to... Increase the strength of our army. We need to make a full stack army, quite frankly. Um, make an army of six units. I assume, obviously, that includes him. Oh, that's a good point, then. So, can these guys get six? Oh, they can, yeah. So, the hero just counts as a slot. Interesting. And good to know. Right, folks. We have reached the end of the episode. I have managed to keep it on time. And actually, uh, only go for 45 minutes and not just go absolutely crazy. And spend about three hours playing on the same episode. So we are going to leave it there. Thank you all very much this, for joining me on this, the second episode of my Meowicus Fluffykins campaign on the brand new Age of Wonders 4. It is a pleasure, as always, to have you here. It is a pleasure, as always, to do this for you. I love playing games and I love sharing it with you. And so I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And once again, if you've got any hints or tips or you've got any answers to any of the questions that I've been randomly saying to the Aether, feel free to chuck them down in the comments below. If there's anything you know how to do that I just have not figured out, then let me know. But until next time, the most important things, stay safe, stay happy, and stay healthy. We'll catch you in the next episode, folks.